If your Bibles turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, and my messages are always simple, so anyhow, uh, as far as being short, we'll see. Uh, time, time will get long-winded, and every now and then we have some short-winded ones. But simply the title of our message is it's really important because it's something I think that we need to all practice and something that we can. But simply, I have it. And you might say, what do you have, preacher? Do you have COVID? No, I don't have COVID. Do you have a headache? No, I don't have a headache. Do you have lots of money? Well, I get some. Oh, I'm being reminded that uh, the air conditioner's off. <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, and you might say, well, what do you have? Well, y'all have it too. And simply, it's something that we need to be given to others. So I have it, so I'll give it. And the first thought that came to mind when I was thinking along this terms was simply this. We have salvation to give. Now think about it. Everyone in here that gives a testimony that they know Christ is their Savior, you can share salvation with someone else. And you know what this world really needs? It's not uh, that they need to suddenly uh, turn the economy around or suddenly need to change the administration or suddenly, you know, we go over all the things that we might need to do or stop the war there uh, in Russia and Ukraine and all those things need to be done. There's no question about it. But folks, they all need salvation. And it, everyone we talked about in every situation, if salvation were to come to those people that are involved in those things, they would be changed. The Bible says that they'd become a new creature in Christ. Amen. And so we see all these exciting lines. And here's the thing. Everyone in here that testifies and said that I know I'm saved. And that's the majority. I know several that are young and they don't fully understand it. But they're getting so close and it won't be long. And they'll be able to understand what salvation is. And uh, But what I'm saying is those of us that are saved, we need to share that good news with others. And folks, it's one of the most exciting things that you could ever do is to show someone else how to receive Jesus as their Amen. Savior. I mean, it's fantastic because that's something that will last for all eternity. Can you imagine a million years from now in heaven with someone that you just led to Christ uh, today or whatever, but a million years from now, they can still be saying, man, I'm so glad you talked to me that day. You know, And, and they might say certain things about you know what happened in particular because I have a perfect memory, you will too. And anyhow, it's the greatest thing that you can do for anyone. And yet when you think, what does salvation cost? I mean, uh, when you talk about having eternal life, when you talk about having an eternal home, a perfect home, a perfect body, a perfect mind, perfect neighbors, I mean, everything perfect about heaven, how much does that work? <laughs> uh, the billionaires, and Elon Musk now is the richest man in the world, and he's worth quite a few billions of dollars right now. Uh, interested to keep up with that and that changes from day to day who the richest person is or whatever. But folks, we're the richest because we have salvation. Yeah. And so we need to share with others how to be saved. And, and I'm so excited because it's so simple that I can share with anyone how to be saved. But it's so simple that you can too. And you say, well, I'm not sure. I'm afraid I might say the wrong thing or whatever. Believe me, God will help you say the right thing. But it's a simple sharing your testimony. When did you receive Christ as your Savior? And how did you receive him as your Savior? And simply, you can just go ahead and you can look at it and say, well, uh, a preacher talked to me, Jared talked to me, or, you know, uh, Miss Martha talked to me, or whatever. And somebody said, well, Brother Ed talked to me, or uh, Brother Chuck, or whatever. We go down the list, but somebody talked to you and they shared with you from the Word of God how that you were a sinner and that you needed to ask Christ to forgive you of your sins and to come into your heart and become your Lord and Savior. You share that testimony with them, and guess what? They can do exactly the same thing that you did and receive Christ as their Savior. Amen. And folks, that's something that you can really, really get excited about. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three says it this way, For I have received... I've got my words covered up here, so... <laughs> I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. The simple one I want to share with you, he says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. And so I'm so thankful for the salvation that was delivered to me. Thankful for that sergeant in the Air Force that took time to talk to me there at Vandenberg Air Force Base and 
share with me how that I could go to heaven. I'm so thankful that he took that time. And again, it's, it's changed my whole life. It's never been the same since. But I'm excited that just as Paul received Christ as his Savior, so others also received Christ as their Savior because of his testimony that he shared with them. So we have salvation to give. And again, I can't think of anything better than that. I mean, we had a, a moment ago when the young ladies asked for money for her dad so he could have gas money to get to work. And uh, But really, the best thing of all is the fact that we can share salvation Amen. with others. And that salvation can save a lost man, a lost woman, a lost boy, a lost girl, whoever they might be, it gives them salvation. And folks, every one of us can do it. It's exciting. I've had several times where very, very young children were able to point somebody to Christ. And uh, and they were just barely had received Christ themselves. And at a young age, they were able to point others. And again, that's exciting because it's something that you can do and I can do. And I can guarantee that there's nothing more exciting than to see somebody get saved and realize that somebody that was headed for hell is now going to heaven because you shared salvation with them. And folks, you're not to ever worry. You're never going to give your salvation away, okay? Uh, that's not ever going to happen. You're always saved. And so I'm thankful for that. And, and we can give and give, and it's never, ever going to run out. It's not like the money in our country. The day's coming, that's going to soon come to an end because it's just, uh, uh, you can only make so much money that's worth any length. And then at a point, it becomes worthless. And our salvation will never, ever be worthless. And then something else that we have that we can all give. You ready? We have the truth. Yeah. I'm so thankful we have the truth right here in God's Word. God gives us truth that we can count on. So many times, it's sad because you read the newspaper and so many things they leave out. Uh, I'm very sad about what happened uh, there in Greenwood. Of course, that's where my son and all, he's a pastor there at Faith Baptist Church. And uh, they could hear the, uh, the ambulances and fire trucks and everybody uh, the police cars all you know running down the road as this had taken place. Uh, I'm so thankful that there was a young man there that uh, he knew how to use the gun that he had. And uh, Caleb said he had 10 rounds and eight of those rounds went in that man before he finally went down. And he shot him at over 40 yards, like he said, which uh, football fields 120 yards from the impulse to the impulse through. So anyhow, uh, that's some pretty good shooting. Uh, and again, I think maybe if you please, God directed his shots. And so all that said, uh, I'm thankful for it. But I, and I thought, you know, they're not going to record this because it makes it sound positive to own a gun. <laughs> and uh, it's interesting, immediately they tried to downplay it and said only 3% of the, the uh, mass murders have been stopped by a individual that was a citizen and just happened to have a gun with them. And folks, we know a lot more than 3%. Uh, that we could tell stories about of people that they had a gun, were there at the right time, and uh, kept something terrible from happening. So again, what am I trying to say? The truth. How many times does our newspaper not give us the truth? How many times do we read things and more likely it's a lie or it's been slanted toward the paper's viewpoint and it's not actually giving us the truth? But we have the truth here in God's Word. And it's been proven over thousands and thousands of years that it is truth and that we can count on it. And it's something that we all can share the truth with others. And it's amazing. Many times when I talk to somebody about Jesus, they'll say, you know, I just feel something inside me. This, this really sounds right, what you're saying. And folks, it's because it is right, because it is the truth. And so we have the truth. The Bible tells us this truth, which I received from the Lord, the Lord's death, uh, his blood redemption, the ordination of, of communion, and uh, many, many other things. Uh, all these things were given to us, and that we know that's the truth. He says, I have delivered it unto you. So God has commissioned you to share the good news. He's commissioned you to share the truth with others that Jesus does save and that Jesus can save anyone. So Paul was a man who, was, who imparted the truth to others, to other people. He wanted them to know what truth was. And folks, at one time, he had followed a lie. He had followed the lie of religion, and he did what the religious people said instead of doing what God would have him to do. And the whole time, he thought he was doing God a favor, but in reality, he was serving religion that was false, that was not true from the Word of God. And he that became a, a killer, if you please, a mass killer, uh, killing Christians, 
then he became one of those, he became a Christian. I mean, what a contrast when you look at his life. And he was able to say that he was the cheapest of sinners. And uh, folks, he was very, very guilty of being very uh, much used by the devil through religion. And so again, when he found the truth and got the truth got a hold of him, it changed him in his message. And 14 of the 27 books of the New Testament were written by this man that had been deceived by the lies of religion and had found the truth in Jesus. And so again, we can share the truth. And folks, it, it's good. And the truth will set you free is what the scripture says and how true that is. And when we talk about the truth, we can't help but get to Jesus because Jesus is the truth. And then we have material things to give. And when I say it, probably here in a little bit, we'll have someone to be able to help uh, the news that they'll have money to at least drive a couple days maybe and uh, to get to work. And I, I'm glad that we have people that have materialistic uh, abilities to help other people. I'm so thankful for that. I think uh, back several years ago when the ladies became deathly sick and she just called me and said, Preacher, I need to talk to you. And I said, well, I was coming by to see you today anyways. And uh, so I got in there and she said, God told me to give you my car. So she gave me her car. I appreciate that. And several other things that uh, were tied with that. And that car has been a blessing. But we've had a number of cars given to us through the years and a number of vans and other things and vehicles here at the church. But what I'm saying, I, I'm thankful for those that materialistically can help. Uh, we have a man that spent $6,000 to get us to men want to be with our kids. And this is the second time to do it. We've never even met the man. Isn't that fantastic? And again, God can help us and help us so we can help others with their material needs that they might have. Luke 21, uh, verses 1 through 4. It says, Simply give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. That's actually Luke 6, 38. But uh, in, in Luke chapter uh, 21, verses 1 through 4, again, we see the Lord, how he uses the gifts of people. And so God can give you things so that you can help others. And so I'm thankful that we can do this. Sometimes it's just a matter of giving somebody a drink of water, you know. Sometimes it may be something a little bit more complicated, uh, but giving somebody a, a blessing, and maybe it might be some sort of financial way that you can help them. But God can use it, and he wants to use us for his honor and for his glory, and he can help us. Uh, the lady that gave me the car, she told me when she first came to our church, she said, Pastor, God has given me the spiritual gift of giving. Where do you want me to give? Where do you want me to put my money? And she said, my money's not my money, it's God's money. And she was very free in giving and helping our missionaries and others that needed help. So what am I saying? That you may not have a whole lot that you can give, but you can give. And you can give something. And so again, God wants us to give of the material things that we have uh, to his calls to the work of Christ. And then as I mentioned earlier, we all have a testimony to give. And really when you think about it, everyone has probably some sort of testimony that we can share about today. Some of you can say, well, there are no way I was gonna be able to make church today because of this or this or that. But here's what happened and that's why I'm here now. And so again, when we talk about testimonies, uh, like I said, uh, Brother, uh, Ron called me earlier today and gave me a testimony about his brother and he was so excited because we've been praying for his brother and his brother's needs and then he shared with me about another minister that had helped him and did a blessing to him and so he was very excited in fact he had kind of I had, had, a, had to catch up with what he said because he got so excited he was just talking so fast trying to tell me everything all these good things are happening so I, I like good testimonies like that don't you but all of us can give testimonies about something good that God did for us today and we need to, because that's the best advertisement that will help people want to have what we have when they see that we have something that's worth having. So again, a good testimony. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, or excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it tells us this, and we see uh, in this verse, it tells us, we look here, verses 14 through 20, it says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that if he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet not henceforth know we him no more. 
Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Isn't it fantastic that God knows the whole world deserves to go to hell? I'm sure glad that, that God didn't just stop and say, okay, you get what you deserve. But instead, he came, became our Savior, was willing to take our sin upon himself to save us so we could be reconciled with God the Father. Isn't that fantastic? The word reconciliation means that you're, you're put back and, and we're separated from God by our sins. But God has been able to take care of our sins so once again we can be united with God. And so what an exciting thought that God can use us in that way as a testimony for him. Psalms 107 verse 2 says this way, Let the redeemer of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Folks, our enemy is the devil. And he's going to do everything he can to help you have a miserable day tomorrow. Okay? And he's going to do everything he can to cause you heartache and problems along the way. He's going to tell you all sorts of lies and try to deceive you. And uh, in many cases, he will deceive us. And God says, hey, I can help you. And I can take care of you. Folks, the devil is no match for our God. He's no match for our Redeemer. And so we can lean up on him to help us to have victory over Satan. The scripture also says in Romans chapter 10, verse 11, for the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And so when we believe on Jesus, we don't have to be ashamed of being a Christian. We don't have to be ashamed of that at all. And it's something that we can be excited about as we share it with others. Then our last uh, point that we want to share with you tonight. You ready? We have a life to give. Has anybody in here ever saved a life? Okay, and, and when I say that, uh, I'm sure that some of you, you know, there's times that things have happened and you know that somebody nearly died or almost died or maybe you repulsed by when it happened or whatever. And I, I guess we could honestly say that the young man that was at the, uh, Greenwood there in that mall, that he saved a number of lives, didn't he? And uh, as he I had to be there at the right time, and he reacted in the right way. And they said that when he was taken in, he was doing everything he could. He was bringing people behind him as he was shooting, trying to bring this man down. And when the man realized he was being hit, he, he tried to get back to the restroom, which he had some more guns in there, and uh, was trying to get to some sort of safety. But wow, he got hit eight times before he finally went down. But what I'm saying is we've had to say that young man was a hero, you know? And when you say he definitely saved some lives, and, uh, and there was something I'm sure when he went to the store that day, he wasn't like, I'm going to go to the store today and I'm going to be a hero. <laughs> I've got my trusty, you know, uh, gun on me here and I'll, I'll be able to save the life today. I'm sure he never had that in his thoughts whatsoever. It was the furthest thing from his mind. It was probably like it really wasn't happening. And folks, what I'm trying to say is everybody that comes your way, they have a soul. And you can save them. When I said, I'm talking about God working through you. You can be like a savior in their life as you show them how to receive Christ as savior. And the thing is, if they don't get saved, you still did what God told you to do. And God can continue to work on their hearts so that they too might come to salvation. And so again, wouldn't it be exciting to save somebody? Wouldn't it be exciting to save somebody's life? Folks, what we're talking about is even more exciting than saving a physical life because we're talking about saving a spiritual life. We're saving somebody from hell, from the eternal torment, to heaven, to eternal bless. Isn't it fantastic that God can use your mouth <laughs> for something good? How many times today did we use our mouth for something that wasn't good? Maybe some of you sassed your parents. Maybe some of you just got a little tart of your little sister or your big brother or whatever. Don't look at me that way. <laughs> okay. But whatever happened and, and you just said some things, some choice words to you. You said, well, they deserved it, preacher. You should have seen what they were doing to me. They deserved it. But wouldn't it be nice if you'd say, wow, my mouth, God used it today. I was able to save somebody. Isn't that interesting? The Bible used that very word and saved. 
because you save them for all eternity from eternal loss. Isn't that neat? I, I think one of the most fantastic things would be for us to get together this coming Sunday and, and some of y'all come running up and just say, Pastor, Pastor, my, my little brother got saved. Or, or, or Pastor, I got to save somebody. Whatever. We, we know it's Jesus that does the saving. Don't misunderstand me. But we can literally give our life to the cause of Christ so that others can find life eternal. And so what a blessing that we can be used by God for His honor and for His glory. And that we can do something that's not cursing people, but blessing people with eternal life. So everyone has a life to give. And uh, so many times we think in terms that Jesus gave his life, and he did. But he gave his life so we can give it to others, okay? He gave his life so we can tell the good news that Jesus does save, and that he can save anyone. I can think of a lot of people that need to be saved right now, can't you? And I think of some people that I can talk to because I didn't know them. And I'm thankful for some people that I have talked to that did get saved. Wow. And I'm thankful for many of those that I have led to Jesus that are in heaven now. That's so exciting. I didn't start leading people to Christ until I was 14 years old. We got anybody here 14? Okay. No 14 year olds? Okay. Chuck Swanson, 14. How about that? <laughs> I know uh, Carol's 14. She's not here tonight. Uh, but uh, any of you older than 14? Okay. Several? Oh, okay. <laughs> so you did white register. <laughs> Thank you, Rod. He raised his hand. Okay. And I finally got a true confession from Chuck Swanson. But, but anyhow, what I was trying to say that, okay, is there anybody younger than 14 in here? Oh, okay. They're waiting for their turn. Okay. <laughs> okay. But the first person I led to Christ, I was 14. And uh, I'm so excited about that. But what I'm saying is, I could have done it younger if I'd known how, or if a preacher had just simply said, hey, you can lead people to Christ too. I could have done it. I just didn't know it because the devil didn't want me to know it. You know what I found? That you as young people are better at winning young people than some big old man like me. Okay. God can use you in a greater way to reach others in your age, but also God can help to use you to win big people for Christ also. And when I say big people, older people. So it's exciting what God can and what he wants to do. And that folks, in one sense, that I'm trying to sign you up in our army, okay? It's the Christian army. And I want you to get ready to do something for Christ and let him use you this week. And instead of uh, letting your mouth run off for the devil, or, well, just run off for yourself, go, well, what would Jesus say right now? And then say what Jesus would say. And folks, that'd be exciting to see the difference that can make in your life. You know what? I've never gotten really upset and said, I can't believe that guy got saved. And, you know, he didn't deserve to get saved. I can't believe that. I mean, why did you let me leave with Christ? Jesus, that was so terrible. <laughs> That's never happened to me. It's always been awful. Wow. Lord, they got saved. Yeah. Wow. I, I remember one night when I was witnessing to a lady, and the guy that was with me was a former Jehovah Witness that had been saved. We were in California, and as we were witnessing, this lady began telling us and shows her paperwork, showing that she was a full-fledged witch, and that she had tra taken training in Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, uh, and anyhow, she had all these things. She had a skull that she would pray over and all sorts of things. And she was telling me about all these things she's done. And I didn't think anything about it. I, I said, I did not much. And next thing I know, she was asking Jesus to save her. And we were walking out the door. And the Jehovah Witness just started hitting me on the back. And said, he said, Jerry, a witch just got saved. And I said, well, yeah, Mrs. Winchester just got saved. No, but, but Mrs. Mrs. Witch, she's a witch. And I, well, she was a witch. <laughs> and it was so neat having that whole family in church the next Sunday. And uh, But what am I saying? Uh, it's exciting. Because am I something special? No. But God's given us all something special that we can share. And I'm not saying you might see a witch saved this week, but it is possible. Uh, 
the more likely you might be able to lead someone else to Christ at your age. Maybe somebody's a little bit younger, maybe a little bit older, but you can make a difference. So I have it. What do you have? Salvation. And so you can give it and give it to others. Help them to find Christ as their Savior. So right now, if you would, would you stand to your feet as we begin our invitation and if, if you fill up the standing. Lord, thank you again for this time that we can come together and study your word. And we pray that you help us to see the importance of giving. And help us to see that, uh, that you want to use us and that you can use us. And that we can use our mouths either for ourselves or for the devil. Or we can use it for you. And Lord, help us to see the importance of sharing our salvation, this fantastic gift, with others. Lord, help us not to think, well, I'm just too young to tell somebody how to get saved. Or I'm just too young to save somebody's life. Or I'm just too... Timothy had that problem all the time. He was a young man. And Paul finally had said, let no man despise thy youth. And folks, that's what your preacher's saying to you tonight. Let no man despise you, youth. You stand up and do something for Jesus. Let Jesus use you for his honor, for his glory. First of all, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. But if you are saved, you need to show others how to be saved. And maybe there's some way you can help somebody in some other way and, and just do what you think Jesus would do if he was here for them. Thank you again for loving us. Pray that you have your way will with this invitation. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, folks, can you help us in the battle? You think maybe we might be able to see somebody get saved this week? At least we can talk to somebody, and, and Jesus is the one that doesn't save him. But we can talk to him. And it's amazing how, you ready? Jesus wants everybody to get saved. He's not willing that any should perish. And he can use you. I, I don't want you to get real caught so, oh, God can use me. And he can he also used the donkey. He also used the rooster. Yeah, he you know, also used the well. But we, we, we go on and on. But what I'm saying is, he can use you. And he wants to. And everybody's blessed when we let God use us. So, there we are. That's, that's your message for the night. And I feel like we've got a good army here. And we've got some really good looking people in here too. And we've got all this extra energy in here with all this youth in here, you know. And uh, so I'm excited about what we have here and the opportunities uh, to serve the Lord. So looking forward to hearing some good news from you this week, okay? So as we go ahead and dismiss in, in prayer again, every time Brother Ed comes out, I think, well, this will probably be our last time to see him here. And then it comes in again. I go, wow, he's here again. So would you dismiss us in prayer, Brother? Sure. Our Father, we thank the Lord for the message that we have Thursday night and how it is spoken to our heart that we need to be one who shares not only our salvation, but we need to share the truth as well. The Lord is so, so easy that we can share our material things, but more than anything, we can share our testimony as well. But thank God one day we give you our life, and now we can share that life. We thank you, Lord, again, for what we have heard, challenge that it was presented. We ask for that what we say and what we do will always bring glory to you. And we thank you for everything that you have given us. We thank you in Jesus' name.